the Routiers had it all. A big Texas house, and even bigger dreams. Then someone took it all away. In a savage instant, two young boys are murdered. As we walked into the den, you could see the blood stains on the carpet. Their mother's throat slashed. Whoever killed these boys meant to kill Darley. Who did this? The hunt for a killer is on. Devin Routier is six years old. His brother Damon, just five. They've both been savagely stabbed in their sleep. Darley Routier, their mother, is bleeding from a jagged wound on her neck. Lieutenant Dave Neighbors was in charge of the crime scene. You know, you can't help but think about walking into that scene for the first time and, and uh, seeing Devin laying there on the floor, looking up at the ceiling. Uh, you know, that's something that she'll never forget. Devin is already dead, stabbed twice in the chest, puncturing his heart. His brother Damon, stabbed six times through his back, his lung and liver pierced, is still breathing when paramedics arrive. He's rushed to hospital, but is dead on arrival. Bleeding from a savage neck wound, Darley Routier is rushed to the closest major hospital, the Baylor University Medical Center in nearby Dallas. When at three o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call, and it was the nurse across the street. And she blurted out that Devin and Damon were dead and that Darley was dying. With Darley fighting for her life, investigators start combing the house for clues. The best chance they have to catch the killer is to move fast. Greg Davis was the assistant district attorney for the Rowlett area. From the very first moment that we walked in the home, it was obvious that the blood evidence would be key in this case. The carpet is soaked in blood. There are signs of a violent struggle. The trail continues in the kitchen. The murder weapon left behind. A boot print has been preserved in blood. A torn screen is discovered in the garage. A blood-stained sock is found in the alley behind the house. And there are reports that a dark-colored sedan was cruising the area just before the attack. It all paints a picture of a killer on the run. While Darley is in surgery, police begin their search for a brutal killer. Her two oldest sons are dead, and she is badly wounded. Dr. Vincent DeMaio is the chief medical examiner for Bear County, Texas. What she had was an incised wound, a cut, or a slashing wound uh, of the uh, right side of the neck that went downward towards the left side. And then there was another cut on the front of her left shoulder, which could very well have been a continuation of this. And she also had a very deep stab wound of her right forearm, where the blade actually went down to the bone. When a doctor came in a couple hours later, I remember him holding my hand and telling me that the throat wound came within one millimeter of her carotid artery. That's like the thickness of a cigarette paper. And if that would have penetrated that, Darley would be dead. In the days to come, enormous bruises stretching from her wrist to her shoulders would emerge on Darley's arms. They're the injuries of a woman who was fighting for her life. Rowlett police call in James Cron, a former member of the Dallas County Sheriff's Department. Cron is now a crime scene consultant who has investigated more than 20,000 crime scenes. The first thing we did in standard step is to do a walkthrough, and that is a 
very careful walk where you do nothing, touch nothing, but except observe the scene. I began about 30 minutes, and uh, the Raleigh police did too, that we felt like there was no intruder. So we had to focus on who was in the house, okay? Well, it's obvious that the infant didn't, didn't kill his brothers and, and stab his mother, so then you have to look at the husband. Within days of the murder of their two children, both Darren and Darley Routier are brought to the Rowlett Police Station. It takes them more than an hour to fill out voluntary statements about what happened the night of the murders. Darren repeats the version of events he told police at the scene, that he was asleep when he heard Darley screaming for help. He rushed downstairs, but was too late to save his children. Darley's story, though, starts to change. The next thing I, I wake up and I feel pressure on me. I felt Damon press on my right shoulder and I heard him cry. This made me really come awake and realize, realize that there, there was, was a man a standing down at my feet, walking away from me, walked after him, heard glass breaking, ran, turn on the light. I ran back towards the utility room, realized that there was a big white handled knife laying on the floor. It was then I realized I had blood all over me, and I grabbed the knife, thinking he was in the I ran back through the kitchen and realized that the entire living room had blood all over it everything. I put the knife back on the counter and I ran to the entrance, turned on the light and I started screaming for Darren. It's the most detailed description yet of what happened. Sunday, June 9th, 1996. Three days after their murder, a funeral is held for Devon and Damon Routier. More than 400 people turn out. But the suspicions of the police are growing. And then comes one of the strangest moments of all. June 14th, eight days after the murders, Devin Routier would have turned seven. The family decides to hold a long-planned birthday party for the young boy at his grave. For two hours, it's a somber service. But the most telling moment comes near the end. Prompted by her sister, Darley sprays a can of silly string over the grave of her two boys. I think we saw the real Darley Routier at that, at that graveside party. You know, and I kept thinking as I saw that, I'm a parent. If my child had died a week earlier, would I be in any condition to even talk about it? And yet, here's a mother sitting out there singing spraying silly string, giving interviews without any sort of emotion. It was bizarre, it was despicable, it really made my stomach turn as I watched her there at that gravesite. Darley's mother has a very different view of the incident. That is a pure example of how you are when you're in grief, because you're crazy when you're in that kind of trauma. You don't believe they're dead one minute, and the next minute, you know, you, you might be laughing, and the next you might be, you know, just crying your eyes out. But this is just something simple. But it made Darley look bad by the way they slowed down her chewing the gum and smiling and spraying silly string as if she didn't care, where the whole purpose of that was it was to do it in their honor, and it was something that they would have loved. Even without a confession, Patterson is convinced his case is solid. He arrests Darley Routier for the murder of her two sons. You're under arrest for the murder of your two boys. At approximately 10.20 p.m. this evening, investigators from the Rowlett Police Department arrested Darley Routier, white female, age 26. 